All right, thank you so much for staying with Citizen TV. You're just in time for the discussion. We told you we'd like to hear your views as well at Trevor and Bidget Citizen TV. Can you use the hashtag Daybreak? We're talking about the BBI and the youth. What's in it for the young people and what do they think? We're trying to get as many voices as possible. I'll start to introduce them beginning from my right. Ahmed Kadar Ali is a blogger and also a youth representative. Is joining us here in studio. Anne Mvuri, a student leader, will be here in just a bit. She's running a bit late. On my left is Alex Matere, convener youth for BBI, and Nathaniel Mongare, the spokesperson ANC Youth League. And joining us online is Arnold Maliba, a convener for Tekeleza Katiba. They're on completely opposite sides. And I'll start with you, Ahmed Gadar. Your quick reactions on the BBI. What do you think? Is it a good document or not? Why and why? And thank you, Trevor, for having me this morning. Uh, first of all, uh, BBI, as it puts, that the Building, Bridges, the Building Bridges Initiative is meant to unite the country, is a good thing. But when you ask how, is where the question comes in. Is it the right thing to, to, to talk about unity because of the way things are put? Mm -hmm. As for me, I think BBI is like uh, a painkiller for a serious ailment, which may not unfortunately cure the disease. Okay. <laughs> Alex, what do you think? Uh, I think from where I see it, first is the realization and recognition that uh, we have a problem as a country, that uh, the current state of affairs has not been fulfilling, especially to the young people who constitute almost 70% of the population. And first, once we agree on that, then uh, the next step comes that uh, as a people, it's important for us to address the challenges that we face and also seek to have a perspective that will guarantee that the same problems that we are having in the current generation, we don't have them reoccur again in the next generation. And uh, that being said, I think uh, the task force went across the country. They collected views, especially from the young people specifically, because I'm here to talk about the young people. And you'd see from page 161, I think, of the, of the, of the report, that uh, several entities of the young people, youth groups, uh, CBOs, youth champions, they were able to have a robust discussion with the task force. And uh, their views and opinions and perspectives were actually captured in the report. So okay. from where I see it, it's a good document, a progressive document that young people should actually champion for. Okay. Let's bring in Nathaniel on this. Nathaniel, your quick thoughts? Uh, first of all, I want to say that the process around BBI is a good process. It is a process that is aimed at bringing unity and accelerating economic development in this country, including uh, something that I'm very passionate about, the shared prosperity, which is a generational mission for us, the young people, as my colleagues have said. If you look at the BBI process itself, they have made very, a raft of very good proposals, and these proposals need to be implemented. I've seen they have also uh, proposed several amendment bills, including a constitutional amendment bill and other legislative proposals around how uh, the BBI will be implemented. Okay. So the biggest question will be the implementation mechanism and also including the gray areas we as young people feel needs to be panel beat so that those who are saying BBI in Isumu Ambaye Meko Asali they should not have that feeling that BBI in Sumu make was sad. Okay. So there is need to build consensus so that uh, those who are talking about an uncontested referendum can have all the issues included in that report. Okay, let's bring in Arnold Maliba who's joining us online. Maliba, what are your quick thoughts on the BBI? Is this the silver bullet? No, it's not. Uh, and it's not. Uh, if you look at BBI and uh, look at the constitution, if you are to compare BBI and the current constitution we have, then BBI is not, in the words of the Bible, qualified to even tie the laces of the, uh, of the shoes of the Constitution. BBI in itself uh, doesn't look clearly placed. It's not well organized. It is all over. And the problem I have had, first of all, with it is that we synonymize the handshake and BBI. Those two processes are different. Uh, two, if you are a person, a student of history, and you have read this constitution very well, and you have also looked at how we have administered the state using this uh, constitution in the last seven years, then you will realize that BBI is actually trying to bastardize the current constitution we have. It doesn't offer any new solutions. And if, when we speak about young people, literally, except for the Youth Commission, Everything else being proposed in BBI, especially for young people, is uh, administrative, is programmatic. If it has to get a little bit uh, far off, you find it's uh, policy and legislative. It's not necessary. It's not even something that we really need to go through the process we are currently going through to actually have it done because we have got competent people working for government and they should be able to do these things very easily without having a process like BBI. Okay. Anne Vuria is here, student leader at the University of Nairobi. Anne, what do you think of the BBI? 
Um, I think the BBI is, um, a, it, has a, it has good things, but at the same time, it has not fulfilled all that we would have hoped, especially for the young people. And it's about time that we start this conversation of, okay, we have this report. The report is seemingly positive, but how do we ensure that the young people are not blinded by the, sh by the few things that have been put there in the BBI so that they can be able to pass the BBI without looking at the most core important things that affect young people in our society and thus they are able not they are even not able to to grow economically to grow um, as people and to continue to build themselves so bbi is a good report it needs to be tweaked a bit so that it can be able to encompass everything that we, even together with my um, colleagues here, Alex Materi and Akadimba, we were together in the Youth for BBI where we presented so many things, but not a lot of those things that we presented have yeah. been captured in the report. So there is something that still needs to be done to ensure that the report is good for the youth. Yeah. What yes. would you like to see in terms of changes? Um, first and foremost, I'd like to speak as a woman. Um, we, we can see that there's gender parity um, <laughs> in this forum today. And um, as a woman, the first thing would be, I like the BBI because it talks about sanitary towels in all basic institutions. Um, it talks about the menstrual health management bill that, um, uh, that aims to protect women against teenage uh, pregnancies, early marriages and all that. And this has key things that are really affecting the young woman in the society right now and it is something that I was very happy and proud to read in the BBI report. Other things were like compelling the parties to ensure that there is um, the two-thirds gender rule because for the longest time we have been crying that we want the two-thirds gender rule to be implemented but how was it going to be implemented? Now we are seeing that uh, political parties will be forced to bring about uh, lists that are gender compliant. We are looking at the IEBC to accept lists that are also gender compliant. Yeah. We have seen that women are also given the opportunity to um, deputize, or if a woman is the governor, the, man sh the deputy should be a man. But w one thing that I wondered was, women really presented that they want also at the executive level, at the presidential level, that we have both uh, gender parity. If the deputy is a, a man, then the president should be a woman, why did the BBI specifically remove that clause that women have continuously championed for? So we are good enough to, to serve at the county level, but we're not good enough to serve at the national level. And that's something that we need to ask ourselves about the BBI. Okay. Yes, it's a good report, but yeah. it needs to be tweaked yeah. just a bit. I mean, Kedar, how do we make this a permanent solution? You're calling it a painkiller to a disease. Yeah, it's, it's just temporary. Uh, you know, like I have said, uh, yeah. the B we all need... The, we all agree on the need to have a cohesive nation, yeah. a, a, a united country. But how we go about it is what matters. For instance, we are talking about the BBI in regards to the young people of this country. If you look at the report itself, there is nothing much substantive you can talk about in, in regards to the young people, except the few sweeteners thrown here and there, like a tax break and you know the help loan uh, break, those kind of stuff. And those are things that don't even need uh, to a referendum or changing the law. Again, BBI comes out as uh, something that fundamentally changes the constitution. Like in, and it comes out in a way that it's like watering down the gains already made under the 2010 constitution. Yeah. Having said that, and again, you know, right now we're talking, my sister here has mentioned about the gender parity. There's nothing in the BBI that guarantees the two-third gender rule that it will, be, it will be achieved under the BBI. Nothing guarantees that. Again, under the BBI, uh, this country, as you all, we all know, we are sort of having a debt trap uh, discussion. Nothing again guarantees in the BBI the debt uh, the, the discussion. Uh, uh, okay, talking about, uh, coming back to the point of BBI uh, in regards to the young people, we're talking about tax break for businesses, uh, business incubation, all these kind of things. Yeah. You know, we are not short of laws. We are not short of policies as a country. We are short of implementation. My point, in for me, I still maintain that we need to implement the, 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 cur the current constitution we have. Okay. We have a good document uh, that we need really to, to, to implement. Again, the problems, you know, when laws are being made, yeah. we always make laws, unfortunately, for political expediency. We don't make laws for posterity. Okay. And you know, when you don't make laws for posterity, you will always have to fix interest here and there. Okay. And that's why we're having all this problem. Okay. Again, there's the issue of... Uh, Yesterday, the High Court nullified 23 laws, yeah. Yeah? including the Cyber Bill and uh, the Finance Act 2018. What guarantees do we have that even the BBI, some of the proportional proposals, sound so unconstitutional? Okay. For coming back to the, to the, to the youth yeah. question, I think 
uh, to speak in 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 Nairobi Sheng to uh, to bow as far as the youth are concerned. All right, yes. Alex. What do you think is in it for the youth? You seem to be the only one who's championing for this document <laughs> as is. Yes. First, I'm actually championing for the document because I've been involved in the process uh, during the first phase and the second phase for validation of the document. And I think an opportunity was given uh, to all people who had been interested to appear before the task force and present their views. And for us as young people, uh, devoid of mischief, I think uh, we grabbed the opportunity. Uh, we sat down, we had a conference, consolidated our, uh, our views into a document and presented it. That, being uns that, that said and done, uh, there's also this aspect of understanding that youth in itself is not uh, static. We might be youth today, three, four years down the line, we might actually be out the, of the bracket of the young people. Uh, and why I'm saying that is because some of, the some of the changes that are coming with the BBI are going to affect not just the youth segment of the population, but the entire population as a whole. For instance, I'd uh, specifically be interested on uh, devolution, and you've had even the COG chair who, said, who, who talked during the Monday uh, launch, and he said one of the biggest wins of this particular document is about devolution. If we can be able to increase the revenue share from 15% to 35%, what is the implication in the counties? We are actually creating more development fund. What is the implication to the young people? Young people, remember, constitute about 70% of our populations back there at the grassroots. If we can have this resource at the grassroots, then what can be done? For instance, county governments, we have uh, a function, for instance, education, the aspect of, uh, of ECD. Yeah. We are talking about good infrastructure. We are talking about health. We are talking about uh, access to opportunities. Closely linked to that is the creation of the Biashara Mashinani Fund. And you realize that we are actually moving away from empty rhetoric and we want now youth to start issues of invention, to make use of the technical skills that they have gotten from the TVETs and other areas. We need to have a fund that can be able to support and finance the technical skills and also the talents of our young people back there at Mashinani. Yeah. But Patera, let me ask you something. So there's the access to government procurement opportunities. 30% yes. of all procurement should go to the young people. We know what happens. It's the older generation who are registering companies and taking advantage of it. What guarantees do you have then that even the seven-year tax break and that will not be taken no advantage? Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Yes. Uh, that 30% thing has always been there. Yeah. You know, the youth always, uh, they're given sweet words in the policy document or proposals within the government. I mean, whenever we are making uh, yeah. laws and that kind of thing. But implementation, implementation is, is So this thing of saying as 30%, yeah. I, think, I think all we need to have is a fair system. Okay. Not, uh, not to be given some... Right. Yeah. Just to add on the issue about implementation, as he has said, there was a 30% procurement rule even before. We had the National Youth Council that was supposed to ensure that um, matters to do with the youth are taken care of. Now yeah. they're talking about a youth commission. What's going to be the difference between the National Youth Council and this youth commission? Yeah. Will it also just come to blind us that there is a group of people who are seemingly supposed to work for us? We have continuously said, and we were even championing for a ministry of youth in the BBI. Why did they decide that youth are not enough, like important enough for them to be given a ministry yes. on their own? We've just been given a side note that is a youth commission. What's going to be the difference between that and whatever we already have? Yeah. It's going to just be another way for for them to continue justifying that they are really helping the youth, but yeah. the youth are not necessarily okay. benefiting. And we even Trevor, have, no, hold we on, even hold on have fast, hold on, yes. Trevor, if, uh, if you this. check the records at the BBI yeah. task force, I'm actually one of the people who uh, presented and, sub and, and proposed that we have, uh, it is actually prudent for this country to have a youth commission that uh, is anchored on the constitution, not an act of law. And you realize when, uh, when, a body is, or, uh, when a body or an institution is anchored on the constitution, definitely it has more powers and more authority and more legitimacy as, someone, as something that is actually anchored in the act of uh, parliament or something like that. Now, that said and done, we realize that there is a problem. The, uh, the point of departure amongst all our views is how to address that problem. We appreciate that there was 30% AGPO for the young people, but how do we ensure that is implemented? It was a brilliant uh, proposal that came. It is a brilliant policy paper, but the implementation matrix is what wasn't available. Yeah. And that's why Youth Commission, and one of the reasons the Youth Commission is actually formed, if you read the, the document, is that we have a chance of now mainstreaming issues of the young people. That we, are want, we want the young people now to have an avenue or a platform yeah. where their issues can actually be seriously addressed by government. And I think one of the issues that is going to be addressed yeah. is the 30% procurement uh, rule.
Okay, let yeah. me bring in Arnold Maliba before I come to you, Nathaniel. Now, Arnold, what do you think of the proposals that have been put through for the youth? The seven-year tax break, is that something that they should be celebrating, the youth commission being put in place as well? Like I said earlier on, everything in the industry, don't need to go back. I and mention a few things. That number one, this report has been a bit of an improvement when it comes to youth. And uh, I really need to qualify that statement. In the first place, youth is mentioned 53 times in this particular report, up from 20 times in the last year. Uh, and in the last, uh, in the 53 times, in, uh, the word youth is actually mentioned in this constitution. Sometimes is actually mentioned in references with glossary and education. Uh, and six points on the on the chart between six which is about three around that. So I need to come down with that figure that come to this later. And the only thing in that report that is new is the Otherwise, everything else we had in that talk about is just under the detector of the people, programs, activities. Uh, Arnold, sorry, we seem to be having a bit of a challenge with your internet. Let's sort that out and then get back to you. We could barely hear you there. Nathaniel, you wanted to jump in on this. Your party leader is asking for committees to be formed to build consensus. Yes. Does the youth wing agree with him? And how many times are we going to create committees? And Because everyone else will then want an amendment to come in. Okay, before I come to my party leader, His Excellency, Mr. Salem Davadi, I wish to state here that, first of all, I support the BBI. 100%. As is. As it is with a few amendments uh, as it has been championed by my party leader. There's a chance it's going to be posed as should you adopt it the way it is or no? It's a yes or no? It, there should be a chance because uh, the constitution is a living document. We have not yet, it has not, the bill has not been published yet. Rather the bill has not been taken to IEBC either in the form of general suggestions or as a constitution amendment bill. So there is still room to amend it before it is submitted to Chebukati. All factors are constant, yes or no? I support the BBI process. Now, okay. there's something I wanted to mention here. Uh, what ails the young people, and the BBI document has been able to highlight that, is the issue of creating sufficient jobs and employment for young people. And how do you do that? You expand the economy. We must have an accelerated expansion of the economy. Now, the BBI, in Chapter 2, has been able to uh, highlight, or rather amend, the formative aspects of the Republic by including a specific clause. I think it's Article 18 on uh, shared prosperity and economy. Now, they talk about very, very good proposal, which I agree with. And if they, we were to implement those proposals, then as a country, we will go very, very far. Now, some of them, it's around the issues of regional trade uh, and integration, uh, around the issue of uh, uh, cohesion, because unemployment is a security issue, as the president acknowledged at BOMAS. They also talk about the issue of having the centrality of the economy. This is the only way to sort out the issue of unemployment. For example, let's look at what other countries are doing as best practices. Uh, some years back, Norway, they were a very poor country. But when they discovered oil in the North Sea, they were able to create a sovereign wealth fund in the name of Oil Fund. Now, Norway has the largest sovereign wealth fund in the world, with 1.4% of the stock shares as a country. If you look at uh, for a country like UAE, they have the Mumbadala Investment Group, which is an a sovereign wealth fund for that country. So they are able to generate the resources from their country and invest in key technologies so that the, this uh, sovereign wealth fund is an issue that is going to be transferred to the next generation as assets. So if you look at our country, and the BBI has been able to acknowledge that, we need to expand the productivity. Now, something else that we need to focus on is the issue of innovation and creativity for the young people. Yeah. What is the government going to do with regarding to tapping into the talent of young people? We have many young people who want to do uh, music, they want to venture into the entertainment industry. Yeah. We need to look at what other countries are doing. What is Nigeria doing in packaging the, the musicians in Nigeria? We have Davido as the richest musician in Africa. We also have very many actors in Nigeria. It is because there are certain deliberate investments that have been made. And I've seen that acknowledged in the BBI. So for me, the largest concern that I have is the issue of shared prosperity. Yeah. So the only way to expand the shared prosperity is to make deliberate investments on young people. I have yeah. seen they have advers uh, adversely talked about the issue of regional integration. We should perhaps ask ourselves, have we domesticated the, uh, the, the laws around the regional integration like the ESC Act, mm. the African Union Act, the United Nations conventions and all those laws around the UN? If the question is yes, 
then we should ask ourselves as a country, what are we going to do on the issue of manufacturing and yeah. industrialization? Okay. The government has a big four agenda, and one of them is manufacturing. So we are not seeing the government coming out clearly on this issue of manufacturing to create jobs for young people. So the BBI has made that recommendation. We just want to see an implementation mechanism on how these jobs are going to be created. Okay. So in, in, uh, in totality, uh, uh, Trevor, mm. I want to say that those are very good proposals with a few things that we need to panel bit. So my party leader has suggested that because this bill has not been submitted or it has not been published, let's form a small structured committee to do panel beating because we are, we are supposed to achieve uh, consensus. He mentioned at BOMAS yeah. that uh, in 2010, the 2010 constitution got 67% support. So if you are supposed to have an uncontested referendum, yeah. how else will you achieve it? It's to do panel beating by including the issues that even the religious community okay. is raised. But uh, is do you think it should be rectified in any way? I think from where I sit, if we talk about, again, formation of another, uh, another strategic uh, committee to mm -hmm. look into the document, would be trying to reinvent the wheel and going back to the Naivasha route. You remember when we were talking about the 2010 draft, that uh, people sat in Bomas, the delegates sat in Bomas, they agreed on how this constitution needed to be. Yeah. Actually, the hybrid, the hybrid constitution, the hybrid uh, system of government was actually agreed in Bomas. But when now politicians recruit, uh, retreated back to Nakuru, uh, to Naivasha, sorry, and the document was uh, mutilated, and when it came, it was a totally different document yeah. from what had was actually proposed in, uh, in, in Bomas. So from where I sit, I think it will be important that uh, the document and the opportunity has, always, has already been given to the Kenyans, that we had the first phase of collection of views, we had a second phase for the validation of views. All the political actors were, were invited, all the... Uh, uh, interest groups and pressure groups were invited to, pro uh, to, to present their views and their perspectives yeah. and also to validate that document and everything else was captured from there. I think I would the, co the, amen the Constitution Amendment Bill is already published part of the report yeah. and it's a goal for us that uh, once uh, once that one has been adopted and civi uh, civic education is done to Kenyans, mm -hmm. then we can move to the next stage of verifying it at the county assemblies. And I would really like to, think so. to strictly and um, strongly disagree with the fact that we as the taxpayers, yeah. we have a very huge burden. The BBI so far has cost billions. It's gonna cost. It's gonna cost a lot more billions for its um, for if a referendum is going to happen and all that. So why should we, as the taxpayers, get a document that is half baked? There definitely needs to be some things that are tweaked so that each and every person who feels that there is something that is amiss, there is something that is not uh, necessarily speaking to me, there is something that should be added or should be changed, is actually changed because at the end of the day, the taxpayer is paying so much money to ensure that this bill does come to uh, fruition. Yeah. So why should we accept something that's half-baked? As Akadimba talked about, he said there needs to be panel beating and definitely there is still time for panel beating to ensure that this document that we we are going to pass is going to be a document that is good enough yeah. for every Kenyan. This consensus that we keep talking about, and do you think we are going to achieve it? Because if the, the moment you open that door, then there will always be amendments after amendments after amendments. Um, we are going to achieve the consensus, and if we're going to go the referendum route, there is no way that we want to, for it for the document to fail. But if the document goes as is, the document will definitely have some people saying there are things that in this document that still do not speak to me. There are things in this document that still are. Um, are not meeting what I would want the document to meet. Because this is going to be a historic moment. Why should we pass something that's not fully baked yeah. as a historic thing in Kenya? And Trevor? the whole world yes, is looking yes. at us. I do understand that, yes, definitely the, the, the report has a lot of good things. Look at the mental health. They're talking about mental health. Right now, during the period of coronavirus, we've had a lot of people having issues with mental health because they've lost their jobs. Um, they have lost a lot of money. Their auctioneers um, at their doorstep asking them, you need to pay all this. So it's saying that now we want to mainstream NACADA, um, the Alcoholics Drink Act and all that, so that we can be able to ensure that the mental health of our people is good. That's a good thing. But then you are, we are being blinded by these few good things and not looking at the in-depth. And that is, there are some things that yeah. are need to be talked about. There yeah. are some things that need to be added to the report to ensure it encompasses everything. Okay. Yes. You're, you're, what do you think is the biggest problem for you, Ahmed Kadar? On for this me, document, what is me, the biggest issue? First of all, we have to make clear, yeah. as Akadiva said, we are not here to oppose this document. Mm -hmm. We are not opposing it. We all agree that we need to have a just and a cohesive country. Yeah. But let's in interrogate you know, the content of this BBI. 
uh, there are many proposals thrown here. And, and, and like I've already said, and as my sister is suggesting, except the few things that are sweeteners for here and there, BBI is fundamentally about restructuring the executive. Yeah, that one we have to agree. It's about creating positions. You I know? think that is wrong. Yeah? No, no, no. I, I, that's a clear thing that's that, your that, view. that has come out. <laughs> it's about completely restructuring the executive. And the question is, are Kenyans ready for such kind of burden? What happens? For instance, we have been talking about the president, the deputy president, prime minister, two deputy prime ministers. Even how that will be formed itself is a bit confusing when you see the report. For example, they talk about the party with the majority. What about if the opposition happens to have the majority member of parliament? Will they still have the, the prime minister position? You know, political bundits and legal experts have been trying to discuss, have been debunking you know, the, the, the document itself, and we are privileged enough to follow the, the discussion. Yeah. Again, the other thing for me that's more important, you remember um, some few months ago, there was the issue of the um, revenue formula in the Senate, and it was so disputed to an extent, you know, they could not reach uh, 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 a consensus yeah. until, you know, and then there, there, was, this, there was this issue of uh, one man, one vote. I'm a pastoralist. That I have to be very clear about it. I come from a pastoralist county uh, where revenue sharing is a key for us. Huh? So the question is, how is BBI handling that? And there have been a, a, a perception or a belief that the one man, one uh, vote formula has been introduced through the back door in yeah. the BBI. Okay. So for me, that's a key thing. So yeah. and I have to. Secondly, uh, yeah, secondly, very briefly. Yeah, secondly, for me, the most, uh, again, the, the other thing is, uh, we have, my friend here has talked about uh, Norway, Dubai, and this kind. You know, we always refer to grand countries, big countries, yeah, with grand, grand ideas, but we don't implement. He talked about uh, the souvenir fund, all these things. We have the youth fund, for instance, uh, in this country. What has it done for the youth of this nation? Here we are talking about a youth commission. So we should not be given some, you know, when you want to go to fish, you know, you go with the hookah and uh, you put your uh, bait. bait and you throw. I think what is in there for the young people of this country, because we are here to discuss that today, is not something substantive enough to convince me to go for the BBI as it is. Okay. So we agree that the BBI is important, but we need to to, to have amendments here and there. Matera, you disagree. Yeah, I actually wanted to come in a bit, especially on the aspect of uh, ensuring that there is consensus. And you realize that democracy in itself, one of the fallacies of democracy is that uh, the majority will always have their way. Yeah. And say, and I dare say, and uh, the minority will have their say. That's said and done. There are some proposals that we even presented before the task force. But it's, the, it's, it's because of the spirit of uh, consensus building and compromise that we've not been actually been able now to continue speaking loudly about them. And Anne had mentioned about um, the things that we had pushed. For instance, when we did our presentation, we had said that uh, if the governor is going to be, uh, to, be, to, to be more than 35 years of age, then the deputy is going to be youth. The, the, the women also came with a brilliant idea that if the governor is a man, then the deputy governor is supposed to be a lady. And we actually uh, added a rider that is not just a lady, but is also actually a lady who's 35 years and below. Mm -hmm. But because we also understand that there are so many other players, we have PWDs, we have women, we have marginalized communities, there's always an aspect of compromise and consensus building. And I think that is what all of us should actually be endeavoring to achieve in as far as we are pushing for the BBI narrative. Secondly, uh, Nathaniel has given examples of... Uh, uh, of, of, of uh, first world countries and also second world countries that are actually developing. And uh, I just want to cue from there and say that uh, we should actually be in a position to do some comparative studies. Mm. Nigeria at the moment is undergoing some SARS. You, you've seen on Twitter, they are talking yes. about uh, NSAS. Uh, last year in Norway, uh, in, in Chile, sorry, there was a demonstration that was actually sparked because of uh, fair increases for the, for the for the young people who are using the trains. And it's actually the students, the high school students who started the demonstration because they never wanted to pay for their affairs and they were feeling that the government is shortchanging them and is not addressing their issues. The same thing that is happening in Nigeria. The young people from Nigeria are feeling that uh, they are being disenfranchised and they are being dissolutioned by the government mm. and they are pushing for reforms. And for us, I think as a country, we are sitting on the table and we have an opportunity to push for those reforms and ensure that the young people of, the, of, of our country are actually treated with respect and that their issues are on the table and not on the menu, the way I had alluded on, uh, on Monday. Mm. That's it and done. I think it's important for young people to celebrate the gains that we have in this document. World over, in terms of constitutionalism, I don't think there's any other consti uh, constitution across the globe that uh, gives the young people an opportunity to have a commission 
that can anchor their, all their issues, their perspective and their views and also their interest in as far as engagement with state and non-state actors is okay. concerned. And that, therefore, I think we should celebrate that. Yeah. We should queue from there and ensure that we adopt this document, not yeah. just for us, but also for future generations. Right. Let me bring in Maliba on this. Maliba, we lost you earlier on, but you're back now. You're making a point on this issue on around BBI and whether it addresses the issues for the youth. I'm actually feeling I money has been poured to ensure that I don't speak. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> having said that, I need to actually like contributing because I've really lost it on a lot of time. But I need to say this: that a constitution is just a basic uh, uh, is about uh, basic laws and principles that then help to govern, of course, uh, distribute and. Uh, uh, distribute and uh, scatter power and so many of such things. But I need to say this. So allow me to go back to this position first of all, that number one, BBI cannot hold a candle for the current constitution. If you are as, you've read the constitution and you are a believer in our constitution and the constitution is your second Bible, BBI has nothing closer to that. So we can therefore not go ahead and say that the only way to take care of issues of a country is to anchor them in the constitution. I need to point out this, that we have got a national gender and equality commission. You know, uh, in, before 2010, I was privileged as one of those young people who tried to really have uh, a, a commission, a youth commission. It's not a good idea, by the way. We tried it in 2010 to actually have it in the Constitution. At that particular time, we were told it can only be a program. So, but at that particular time, we had the confidence that once it's anchored in the Constitution, it will actually be worked on properly. Now, we did not have the experience such as we have been. Can you hear me, Trevor? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so we didn't have an experience that uh, it even doesn't matter. Sometimes you can have each stuff in the constitution and they are still bastard. I'll give you an example. There are so many commissions in this country today and you hear nothing of them. Uh, at that particular time, we thought that once something in the constitution, the powers that be will be compelled to do it. I can run you through what we have today. Today we have got about 20 programs that actually ha are in either legislation or in policy that are running for young people. We have got about uh, 17, actually 14 policies for young people, uh, six institutional frameworks, uh, 13 uh, legislation for young people, and all that have actually not been worked on. Trevor, you do not need the constitution to ensure that the president, for example, operationalizes the National Youth Council. This government and administration has bastardized the National Youth Council. It was just about giving them money. It was just about ensuring that they have got capacity. They have refused to do that. If this, if this particular government, for example, can actually harass the judiciary, which is an arm, and we are talking about a vertical arm when you talk about dispersion of power, if they can actually harass the judiciary, what yeah. will they do to a commission? Even if you made the national, or rather the youth factor, or rather the youth function, the fourth arm of government, if there is no political goodwill like there has not been in the last seven years, nothing will happen. What is in this constitution is, a, what is in this BBI report is a lot of sloganeering. There is a lot of sloganeering here. So for me, I'll tell you this, that BBI is all heart, no cattle. BBI is all smoke, no fire. And BBI is all style and no substance. There is nothing. All you hear there is just pure English <laughs> and a little bit words here and there. But it has nothing for young people. And you see, it took a little bit of noises for even that particular commission to be done there. So are we supposed to celebrate that young people are being given a, a, some tokens here? BPI, even the way it addresses the youth issue, is very tokenistic. And we are not going to sit here and uh, clap because a few young people are organized from Harambe Avenue and they gave their proposals <laughs> and uh, then they took photos and then they are here being given positions uh, or other uh, prominent places to sit and talk about. BPI as is does not befit 13.7 million young people in this country who are, by the way, the most productive uh, part of the adult population. Yeah. We cannot go round and round and round and round in circles and say that BBA is enough. So for me, and that is why for us at uh, Tekeleza Katiba, it's so easy to implement this constitution. You did not need a referendum, for example, to write off loans for farmers. Yeah. Coffee farmers have had their loans written off three times. There was no referendum. But for young people to be given something like uh, looking at help, you are being told support a referendum. You know, there's just a way people treat young people in this country like uh, some second-hand, or rather a poor relative in a family. So, 
literally everything that is in here, there is nothing important for young people. A youth commission yeah. is good, and we thank Kit Mater and the others for actually putting in that. I have heard and say that yeah. a number of the things they put in did not even feature. And probably we need to go to the basics and say, we try to speak up and say, can we have a young person in that particular top committee? We yeah. were told they can't be there. So a, a number of young people, including Kina Alex and others, were then given some uh, roles to sit around and a number of young people just to take photos and look like they are holding papers here. I had a meeting with other stakeholders with the US ambassador on that particular issue, including uh, at that particular time the person who was the CEO of uh, BBI, that is uh, Ambassador uh, Karau. We had that conversation. At yeah. that particular time, they actually accepted that it was important that they involve young people. So it is one thing to have young people talk, yeah. you know, like uh, have young people continuously talk, but then when it comes to factoring in what they have said, it becomes problematic. Yet young people okay. have got a monopoly on brains. Yeah. They have got the beauty, they have got the elegance, they have got the strength and everything else. Okay. Let's just they either open up that document for further review and factor in youth issues. Because the document is flowing back even on the progress young people had made. Yeah. We, currently we have clear stuff that are infenced here and there. So we cannot be told again that let us go back and then look at this thing in the way it is. Okay. BBI has little interest for the young people of this country and we must speak boldly without being afraid. Okay. This is public space. Yes. It is both contested and it's both negotiated. So okay. if Alex and the others are actually okay with negotiating, it's fine. Even when we were fighting for independence, there were the Mau Mau, and then there were those people who were negotiating, the Tomboya, the people who went to, uh, to, to Britain so many times to negotiate. So those are two ways. Okay. Both of us are actually trying to use to ensure I'm that sorry, we can I give right. I'm, 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 I'm happy. Can I give a rebuttal? I've been Guys, guys, first I have to take a quick break, then we'll come back. Matere will respond to the accusation. <laughs> That has been the fire that has been lit by Arnold, and I'll get a view from all of you in just a bit. All right, keep your views coming. I see a lot of them coming through at Citizen TV Kenya Trevor Mbija. Hashtag Daybreak. We'll read some of them in just a bit.